Good afternoon, everybody. It's Pastor Matt. It's good to see you today. It's uh, Tuesday, Cinco de Mayo Day, uh, for those of you who are keeping track of that. But even more, today is the day the Lord's made, so we get to celebrate uh, the gifts of today as we, we go through each day of life, despite the changes and chances of the world. Uh, today, as we get together for this couple of moments and, and to get to talk with each other, uh, there's a couple of things been again, kind of going through my head and ways that I've been thinking about trying to bring some things to you. You know, there's tons of information. You've got more than you need out there, I know, uh, in many different ways. But as I've started to get out and start to talk to some people, whether older or the last, yesterday I got to talk to some younger people and visiting with them. Um, the challenge is for many people, uh, the, the, they're feeling very much isolated and alone. When I ask kids, what are you missing the most right now? They would say friends, getting to do things with friends. And for other people, it's the same as well. And the other thing is also the question about people uh, feeling, uh, for lack of a better term, non-essential. Uh, you know, the, the government right now in, in Illinois is talking about ways to, to start looking at opening up things and making things happen. And so the pastors in our local area well, the Lutheran congregations were talking today about how to look forward to beginning to start to work that process into place and putting it in place for all of us. Um, but we also discussed uh, a variety of other things. And Pastor Dennis Meyer is the one who, who talked about, uh, you know, the fact that words have been used throughout this time um, that are they're going to leave a mark with people. Uh, things like social distancing. You know, that goes back to the idea that, you know, social distancing is important in some sense, but really one of the greatest struggles that people are facing is the isolation of this time. The loneliness, the feeling that they're very disconnected from each other. Uh, it, it really is something, uh, but even more so to go to the store. If you have to go to the store and you're wearing your mask and you're walking through the store, and people seem to almost like move away from each other and, and not greet each other. They won't look at you. They won't, they won't share a greeting. Uh, fear is not our way. We, we believe in a God who would talk and be with anyone. He, he invites us to talk and be with everyone. We have to continue to share the grace of God's presence and greet one another and others, even though they don't greet us back. Continue to share the hope that, hey, there is more to this than, than just this moment. Fear can't overcome us. Fear can't hold on to us. So the social distancing part is one thing. The other piece is the idea of the, um, uh, the word essential. That word has been kind of used quite a bit here lately, and that really can be a challenge. Uh, the idea for many people wrestling with the idea that they're not essential uh, anymore. Uh, I don't have an essential job. I don't work in an essential place. Uh, that makes me not a, a non-essential person. People already struggle in our daily lives because of sin and brokenness with the idea that, that we can uh, not be loved, that we cannot be good enough. Uh, with God. And so to throw this this word in to say that you're not essential uh, really is a challenge for people. So I thought I would talk to you for just a minute and just bring a couple of scriptural verses to you to, to listen to how, how God talks about how exactly uh, essential you are to this whole picture of, of what it is that he's done. You know, back in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 1, uh, God said these words uh, through Isaiah, I, I, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Can you hear the sense of being essential in there? The fact that God himself says, I created you. I know you. I have redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. There's no mistaking that. That's an essential person. And a person who follows Christ and who seeks to know and love God becomes essential because of that relationship that God gives to us and calls us into and to be a part of. But later on in the same chapter, 43, verse 7, God says these words, Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, who I formed and made. Again, there's no mistaking. He created you for his glory. His purpose in you is that you would be a glory to him. You would bless others to see him through you in your words, your deeds, your actions. What a, how can you say that you couldn't be essential in that kind of call with God speaking himself to you, just like those words? In the book of Jeremiah, God wrote the, said these words, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. 
Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. What could be more essential right now in the midst of these challenging days than the people of God calling people around them, talking to people around them, meeting people through Zoom or phone calls or just out in the neighborhood standing six feet or more apart talking and telling them the good news of Jesus Christ? How more essential could you be? You and I have the ability to carry the message of God's grace to people who right now are seeming to flounder and seeming to struggle because they think they're not of any value to God. And whether they're in the church or not doesn't mean that God doesn't care deeply for them. He's longing for them to come. And he has a great purpose for you and I to call them to come and be with him as well. You know, in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, Jesus himself talks about this in ways that that, uh, help us understand exactly how uh, essential we are. When he talks about sparrows, and he, he asks the questions, aren't five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. In other words, sparrows are pretty cheap, you know. And instead of a dime a dozen, they're, they're, they're two a penny. Uh, you know, that, 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 that's pretty cheap. But not one of them is forgotten by God. And indeed, he goes on to say in Luke, indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Well, it's getting easier for God to know me and many people, isn't it? But every single hair on your head is numbered. He knows you that well. So he says these words, don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. You and I are called to understand how valuable we are to God, how essential we are to grow in faith and relationship with him, learning in his word, wrestling with his word, understanding he is calling us to be his people and to shine with glory and power and strength, even in the midst of struggle and hardship, to know that he is our God and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture, as we talked about last week in a little bit. You know, the the gospel of John chapter 15, verse 16 says something even more important, perhaps, where Jesus is talking to his disciples before he's uh, getting ready to go to his crucifixion as he's ending his earthly ministry. And uh, how how much more essential can you be than to have Jesus, the the, the Redeemer, the Creator, the, the, the one who has brought all of earth under his foot, to be able to be controlled and loved and and given grace by him in every possible way. When Jesus says to you and I, just like he's talking to his other disciples, and he says, you did not choose me. I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. You know, when when the question of of essential comes to us, um, the fact is we ought to realize exactly how essential we are to God. When we've been baptized and claimed in his grace, we have become more than just another person. We are essential because we are God's children in the world. His hands, his feet, the people who make a difference and have the possibility of bringing light and life into this world for him, through him, and with him. You know, the the real joy for us as a Christian is to be able to realize that every single person that is hearing this and and knows Jesus Christ, you're called to be a different kind of person than everybody else. I talked about it recently in Bible studies as well. When when people look at me and say, well, I'm just a... No. If you're in Christ, if you are baptized, if you are claimed by him, if you are a Christian who who says that he is your Lord, you are never just a anything. You are a child of God, an heir of the kingdom of heaven. These are not words that should be taken lightly. These are not words we should use and not let them sink into our hearts, even though we struggle with them and wrestle with them because we know who we are in our own selves. The God of all creation the God who created you from before time, who knew you long before you were born, and will hold you long after you have died, is the one who says, you are essential. I have chosen you. You are my child. And he does it through the gift of water and word. And so he keeps feeding us as well through the communion to remind us we're welcome at the family table. You know, As the week goes on, I'm going to try to get to you at least once or twice more for sure. But I definitely want you to think about how how essential you are. 
It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your what physical limitations you think. And I, I believe I've said this, I don't know, hundreds of times, that there is no there is no place where you as a Christian don't have something to do and don't have some power to be a part of exactly what God's doing in this world today to bring a different light into the world. Matter of fact, I think it's coming up in the text this coming weekend where Jesus talks about the fact that you are going to do far more than I can. Why? Because the body of the church is not just one person. It's hundreds of thousands of powerful people who all have the ability to reach in the world. And if the church would just stand up, if the church would claim its right, if the church would understand the gifts of God, oh, imagine how the world could truly change. These are difficult days, no doubt. There are days of challenge and there are days with wrestlings, there are days of, of struggle, but don't let them overcome you. Continue to encourage one another with these words. Paul reminds us in other places of Scripture that the good news of Jesus Christ does change the world around us, and it needs to start right here in me, changing you and me to be God's people as we already are. Paul invites us to live a life that we've already been given, to step into the thing that we have already been made, to put on the robe that we have been given. And all of that is in Christ Jesus. The place is still here. We're still waiting and longing for you to come back, continuing to pray that soon this will be over, but continuing to pray that we would all use our common sense, wisdom, and strength to do the best we can to care for one another and ourselves through these difficult days. May God bless you and keep you today. You are his sheep. He knows you by name. Listen to his voice and follow him. God's peace till we see each other again. Amen.